Good morning. Today we will discuss about the resolving power and dispersive power of grating. In the last class we were discussed about grating and the theory of grating. So today what is the resolving power and dispersive power? What is resolving power? You know what is resolving power because you are all handling with the camera whether it is mobile camera or handy cam or any type of cam you know the resolving power or a solution okay so it is the ability of an optical instrument to produce distinctly separate images of two nearby objects so that ability is the resolving power of that instrument so when we are uh, focusing on an object using an optical instrument Mm. If it is not, uh, I will say, uh, you, you might have met some situations when you are taking f photos in your camera that and you are focusing on some objects, uh, some objects may not be distinguished in your camera, but uh, then what you do, you will zoom and zoom in order to clearly see it. Uh, sometimes you may be able to distinguish the objects uh, sometimes the there may be two objects but when you are when you take the photos uh, it will look like a single one you cannot resolve that in your uh, picture so resolving means distinguish that is if there are two or more objects and the focus of this objects that must be resolved when you see the objects through this optical instrument okay so the solving power is the ability of that particular optical instrument to produce that distinct separation between between the images of this to nearby objects uh, so that objects we are focusing will be very very close so that we cannot distinguish when we are focusing on that but uh, an object with a very high resolving power is very easily able to distinguish these two objects so that so that you can see these two separate uh, images to nearby images as very uh, separately that's the resolving power so there is a minimum space between the objects which could be seen as distinct and this minimum separation is called the limit of resolution so in order to uh, define this uh, resolution power of the limit of resolution of a particular there is a minimum space between the objects which could be seen as distinct and this minimum separation linear or angular is called the limit of resolution so the, uh, so the objects must be uh, separated in such a way that uh, that should be limited to some particular value uh, only up to that value we can resolve that object distinctly and that value is known as the limit of the result resolution beyond that we can't resolve that object so that objects uh, we are trying to distinct or resolve uh, must, must be of a minimum separation and that value is called the limit of resolution the resolving power of a grating is its ability to show two neighboring spectral lines in a spectrum as separate uh, so in general uh, we have defined the resolving power of an optical instrument so coming to the case of grating the resolving power of grating is its ability to show two two neighboring spectral lines in a spectrum as separate so we are uh, producing spectrum using grating uh, so 
Grating this solving power means its ability to uh, distinguish neighboring spectral lines. In other words, its ability to form to separate dif diffracted images. So we can say if lambda and lambda plus d lambda are the wavelength of two closely separated spectral lines, then resolving power is defined as lambda by d lambda. Okay, so this is the definition lambda by d lambda where lambda is the uh, lambda and d lambda, lambda and lambda plus d lambda are the separation between sorry spectral uh, wavelength of two neighboring spectral lines so that d lambda is the separation uh, sorry the difference between this wavelength of these spectral lines we will know how this uh, equation emerges so for that we will define the Rayleigh's criterion for resolution of spectral lines so here you can see two you can see two figures one is unresolved and the second one is resolved so if you actually uh, in the first figure there are two peaks, two maximum peaks appearing here. But when you uh, look through the instrument, uh, you can see only, only the, only a single peak. So, so this is an unresolved spectrum. Okay, but the resolved spectrum will look like this. That is, this in, this individual peaks will appear like this. So this is a resolved spectrum. This is unresolved. These two separated, distinguished uh, spectrum are look like one. So that this is unresolved, but this is separated here. This so uh, this is resolved. So according to Rayleigh's criterion. Two closely spaced spectral lines will be just resolved uh, or appear as separate when the central diffraction maxima of one spectral line coincides with the first minima of the other. That is, so this is the first spectral line, and you can see this is the first minima, this is the secondary minima. That is, this is the first. So, uh, this is a central maxima so that uh, another principal maxima will appear here so this will represent the secondary maxima and minima in between this so this is the first secondary minima and this is the first secondary maxima and then secondary minima secondary maxima etc and similarly for this spectral line so also which which have been drawn here uh, so according to Rayleigh's criterion what he says is that um, in order to distinguish or separate these two spectral lines the central diffraction maxima of one spectral lines must be coincides with the first minima of the other okay that is uh, this is the first spectral line and this is the this is its first secondary minima and first secondary maxima etc so the second spectral line's central maximum is appearing where the first secondary minima of the first spectral line appears. You can see from this picture. Okay, that is this is the first central central maximum of first spectral line. This is the central maximum of second spectral line, and this is the first secondary minima of first spectral lines and you can see the secondary maxima of the second spectral line is falling on the first secondary minima of the first spectral line. So this is the Rayleigh's criterion uh, that is these two if these spectral lines are uh, lying like this we can't distinguish these spectral lines and this spectrum will appear like a single uh, spectrum. 
but if this spectral lines are lying like this that is the central maxima is lying on the first secondary minima of first spectra then it will be resolved this is what Rayleigh's criterion ok so if there are two spectral lines of wavelength lambda uh, and lambda plus d lambda then according to Rayleigh's criterion for resolution the principal maxima corresponding to the second spectral lines uh, whose wavelength is lambda plus d lambda must coincide with the first secondary minima of spectral lines which have wavelength lambda that what we have explained just before now if theta n and theta n plus d theta are the angles of diffraction for the nth order principal maxima corresponding to wavelength lambda and lambda plus d lambda respectively uh, we have already explained what are principal maxima secondary maxima in my etc and we already know the diffraction equation from the last classes so if theta n and theta n plus theta d theta are the angles of diffraction corresponding to these two spectral lines then we can write the diffraction diffraction sorry grating equation as a plus b sin theta n which is equal to n lambda uh, for the first spectral line and a plus b sin theta n plus d theta is equal to n into lambda plus d lambda uh, for the second spectral lines okay so for resolution the first secondary minima of wavelength lambda must be produced at the angle of diffraction where the principal maximum of lambda plus d lambda is formed that is we have already explained this that is the secondary uh, so the principal maxima of this second spectral line is appearing on the first secondary minima of the first spectral lines so uh, in order for this resolution uh, uh, we could see the uh, the first secondary minima of the wavelength lambda must be produced at the angle of diffraction that is the angle of diffraction should be such that uh, the principal maxima of lambda plus d lambda should be there at that point so we can write this equation as a plus b sin theta n plus d theta is equal to n lambda plus lambda by n1 that is uh, this is an additional path difference ok that is this much path difference should be there in order to achieve this condition that is we are introducing this path difference such that uh, between this spectral line uh, such that uh, then only the principal maxima of the second wavelength is falling on the first secondary minima of the first spectral line where in a n1 is the total number of line on the grid so you look at this uh, equations too and Uh, from this equation 2 and 3 uh, the right sides of this e left sides of this equation are equal so we can equa equate the right side so that n lambda plus lambda by n1 is equal to n into lambda plus d lambda um, and from this equation uh, we will get n lambda and n lambda on both sides will cancel each other so that remaining is lambda by d lambda which is equal to small n into okay small n into d lambda and uh, we are rearranging the term that is uh, d lambda from right side is uh, taking on LHS and n1 on RHS so we will get lambda by d lambda is equal to n into n1 which is nothing but the resolving bar we have defined here 
so the resolving power is derived like this lambda by d lambda which is equal to small n into capital one n1 which is r which is r r representing the resolving power so resolving power is nothing but small n into capital n1 and you can see from this equation that it is directly proportional to the total number of lines on the grating for a given for a given order of spectrum okay so this is about the solving power now we can see the dispersive power of it is defined as the ratio of the difference in the angle of diffraction of any two neighboring spectral lines to the difference in their wavelengths so we can see let theta be the angle of diffraction for wavelength lambda and theta plus d theta the angle of diffraction for lambda plus d lambda then the dispersive power of creating can be find out like this so difference so okay so the difference in angle can be uh, theta plus d theta minus theta which is d theta the difference in wavelength is lambda plus d lambda minus lambda which so that the dispersive power is the change in wavelength so change in angle to change in wavelength is d theta by d lambda from these two that is defined here now the condition for nth maximum for the wavelength lambda can be written as a plus b sin theta is equal to n lambda which we already know uh, if we differentiate with uh, this equation with respect to lambda we will get on the left side a plus b um, differentiation of sin theta will give you cos theta and d theta by d lambda which is equal to n uh, the differentiate lambda it will give you value of 1 from this d theta by d lambda is equal to n by a plus b cos theta uh, but we have already know 1 by a plus b is equal to capital which is the number of lines per centimeter on the grating we have seen it in the last class hence d theta by d lambda is capital n into small n by cos theta where 1 we have substituted capital N for 1 by A plus B. For small values of theta, cos theta is equal to 1. And therefore, d theta by d lambda is equal to capital N into small n. From this, we can see that d theta is proportional to d lambda for a given order of spectrum. Such a spectrum is called normal spectrum. Okay, so this is about the solving power. Now what you will do in lab with this grating, you can use this grating um, for the determination of wavelength of a monochromatic line. So we will briefly explain the experiment to determine the wavelength of monochromatic light uh, using plane diffraction grating. You will do uh, this experiment in your practical classes so you must know the theory of this grating and other grating equations extra so the preliminary adjustments for the spectrometers are done uh, as we do uh, when we are doing an experiment with spectrometer the preliminary uh, for the preliminary adjustment you just go through your um, higher secondary physics classes uh, in which it will uh, detail explain the preliminary adjustment of a spectrometer and the parts of a spectrometer so you should go or you must go through the parts of the spectrometer and the preliminary adjustments of the spectrometer okay after doing the preliminary adjustments uh, we will uh, arrange this grating um, on the grating table on the grating table in such a way that light is incident normally on the grating okay so this is the collimator where the light is coming 
and we will observe from here here is the uh, telescope part okay so the grating is set for normal incidence with monochromatic light the first order and second order grating spectrum is viewed through telescope so we will get uh, the central maxima central bright point here and first order second order uh, spectra zone uh, either sides of the central maxima which we have already explained in the last classes how these spectra first order and second order spectra are formed so we will get a colored spectrum if we are using white light and since we are using monochromatic light we will get uh, order spectrum first order second order third order spectrum on both sides with the maximum and minimum intensities the uh, angles 2 theta 1 and 2 theta for the first order and second order spectra are measured the angles uh, I think this angles are theta 1 and theta 2 yes this is theta 1 and theta 2 it is written here yeah it is written here for first order theta is theta 1 and second order theta is theta 2 so that is this is a printing mistake the angles theta 1 and theta 2 for the first order and second order spectra are measured by keeping the telescope on left and right side of the central maxima so what we can see is when we are arranging the grating like this you can see the uh, spectra on either sides of the central maxima and if we are keeping the telescope here uh, on the central bright point of this first order spectrum you can measure the angle of this uh, um, bright point of this first order spectrum so you will get a central uh, bright point central maxima uh, on this point at this point and first order and second order spectra on both sides and if you uh, you can view this using a telescope uh, here and if you are placing a telescope at the central bright point of this first order spectra you can measure the angle of this uh, first order spectra and you have if you are keeping this telescope on this point you can measure the order to the second order spectra and towards this side also from this uh, vernier table of this spectrometer okay uh, so if you are measuring this theta 1 and theta 2 for the first order and second order spectra from this uh, you can calculate lambda using this uh, procedure that is uh, lambda is nothing but sine theta by s capital N into small n which we have already seen this equation for the first order uh, spectra n is equal to 1 and theta is equal to theta 1 so that lambda is sin theta 1 by capital N and for second order spectra n is equal to 2 and theta is equal to theta 2 lambda is equal to sin theta 2 by 2n where small n is 2 so you can see you can find out the values of lambda uh, like this for different order spectra and the average value of wavelength will give you the wavelength of the given light so this is how we are using grating in the normal incidence method uh, in the lab in order to find the wavelength in order to find the wavelength of the given uh, source of light okay so this is all about resolving power grating power and experiment using grating. Thank you.